Hey guys, welcome to the edge of real and cyberspace. Welcome to KWTV 0016. Um, it is October, it is Friday evening. I just went to pick up some kebab and uh, we're going to have a nice evening at home and we are going to produce KWTV 0016. Today we're going to talk about um, Ubuntu 10.10 .10, which is going to be released at the end of this month. Get the scoop early, watch KWTV 0016 and we are going to show you what it looks like and how to install it. So enjoy KWTV 0016 Ubuntu Maverick Meerkat. On the edge of real and cyberspace, there is one place you can go, and you found it. Welcome to KWTV 0016, uh, first glance at Ubuntu 10.10 .10, Maverick Meerkat. Hey guys and girls, how are you today? I want to start off by saying thank you to everybody who's been so kind to uh, give us a lot of feedback on the previous KWTV um, episode. We've had more than 10 comments uh, and lots of them were long comments with lots of information in them. So Eric Seal, Pete S, all of you guys who commented on the feed and on the episode, thank you very much. Please keep up those comments. Well, my friends, it is October. That means that there is a 10 in the month. It's the 10th 10th month of the year, and every time there is a number 4 month or a number 10 month, April or October, something happens in the Linux community. It's just like every time Ubuntu releases a new version, and we are looking at version 10.10 .10 being released at the end of October. Um, always nice, every six months they release a new version. Sometimes the changes are minor, sometimes the changes are major, but you never know what it's going to be. So, good thing that you have us to check it out for you. We've downloaded the latest version, which is the release candidate, that will enable you to uh, and download it and install it, and we will be going through the installation and configuration of that version of Ubuntu. So, Ubuntu 10.10 .10 Maverick Meerkat, once again, funky name. What's really new under the bonnet? Well, it's a minor upgrade, so it's a point upgrade, as we say. And it doesn't really mean that there's always a new version. Most changes are smaller, cosmetic changes sometimes, but you'll see that as we do the screencast. Now, if I take a look at what's new, I think that um, we should say that the installation menu has changed. Uh, that has become a lot more professional in Ubuntu 10.10. Um, there is a new version of Evolution in there, for those of you who still use that mail and uh, uh, calendar client. Um, F-Spot has been dropped in favor of um, Shotwell as a picture editor. Um, let's see, better integration of Ubuntu 1 into the desktop, new sound menu, and a new version of GWiber. Those are the main lines. Now, this is a release candidate, and for those of you who want to know what's the difference between an alpha, beta, and a release candidate, a release candidate is pretty much ready to go, ready to get out there. And you can try Ubuntu new releases from the betas as they come out. But if you're trying out the alphas and the betas, please don't do it on a production machine and make sure that you always have backups and that that machine that you're using is not really essential. You can be part of the Ubuntu community by playing with the betas or the alpha releases, which are the brand new spanking releases, and reporting any bugs or errors that you find, and they will fix those errors, and thus the, pr the product becomes better. That's basically how Ubuntu works. But today we are going for the release candidate now you can do this as well. You can, if you say, Nightwise, this looks really cool to me, I want to try it out. No problem. Download the release candidate, but make sure you do all your updates. That's about the release candidate. That's about uh, now about what we are going to talk about. We are going to install Ubuntu 10.10 .10 on a system, and I'm going to show you how to partition stuff just right so your data is always safe. We are going to install uh, all of the updates so you can keep your latest version of Ubuntu up to date and make sure that you have all the bug fixes and all the other security updates. And we are going to install a package that is called Ubuntu Tweak. And Ubuntu Tweak will enable you to install third-party sources, third-party packages, and make that a really useful uh, application. Make that Ubuntu vanilla, plain vanilla Ubuntu into an application or an operating system with all of the goodies that you need. You got like Flash and you got like VLC and you got like DVD playback, everything you need 
and a great looking desktop. You can do all of that with one application and that's a, that app's called Ubuntu Tweak and I'm going to show you today how to install it and how to use it. Finally, we're going to take a look at Compass, very, very basic look at Compass and this is the application in Ubuntu that makes your desktop look really fancy with the rotating desktop cube and the flying windows and everything that you want. Compass, very, very powerful, very complicated. Today, I'm going to show you how to install Compass and run through the Compass menu. Just a couple of basic clicks to get that productive, nice looking desktop and make that Ubuntu 10.10 .10 into a really nice install. So, what are we waiting for? Let's get down to it. Ubuntu 10.10 .10 is different right off the bat with the installation screen. Booting up the Live CD, you get this big, big screen. No more dark screen with uh, just a few lines, but now a nice logo with uh, the option to try Ubuntu, which means that you can continue booting the Live CD or install it. And on the left side, you can choose your language. So we're going to go for English and install Ubuntu. The installer starts and warns us that this is, of course, a pre-release. Uh, October 2010 will be the final release. It will be in a few days. So um, it does say that you have to be a little bit careful because you are playing with a beta. Then we have a new screen in the installation that uh, gives you some requirements. You have at least 2.6 gigabytes. You are plugged in and you are connected to the internet is important and right off the bat you can also install mp3 play, uh, playback and flash content so you don't have to do that afterwards just take on the box down here you can see that you can also download the updates while you're installing which will actually get you the freshest version of ubuntu right off the net we're not going to go for that option because um, oh here's the uh, ubuntu trying to get through my firewall but you can actually choose the freshest version off the net by taking the download up updates while installing. So we're going to click on next and go to the next screen. Oops, kind of selected that. Don't want that. We'll uh, be using the latest version. Now we're going to partition the hard drive. I'm going to choose to erase uh, the entire disk and use it entirely for Ubuntu and I'm going to specify my partitions manually. With the option at the top, Ubuntu will do the partitioning itself, but I'm going to show you the geeky way and I'm going to show you how to do that. The next screen actually shows you your drive, dev sdh, which is your primary hard drive, and to get started we'll have to build a new partition table. Get a warning screen. And if you already have a partition table, everything will be removed, so be careful. You'll see that I have about 8.5 gigabytes of free space. I click the free space and choose Add to add a new partition. Now we're going to go for the first partition. The first partition is where your applications and everything are going to be. So we're going to make that about, let's see, um, let me think here, about three and a half gigs will do. I'll leave the setting to primary, beginning and ext4. Now you have to choose a mount point because this is the place where your applications are. We're going to choose the root application, uh, the root partition, sorry. So this is going to be the partition that is mounted in the root and it's going to house all of your applications. Takes a while to build. There you go. Now click free space again and choose add. The second partition is going to be the partition where all of your data is. That way you can erase your operating system but keep your personal data. I'm going to make that about 4000 uh, megabytes big or 4 gig. Leave that to logical. EXT is OK. But choose the home partition. And there. That means that all of our personal files will be stored in a separate partition. And if you reinstall you can always reinstall the primary partition, the root partition, or the slash partition, and uh, keep your data and all of your settings intact. And finally, we left some space, about double of the RAM that you have for the swap space partition. Again, click free space, leave all settings to where it is, but don't choose a mount point here, but choose in the file system menu, use as not that one. There you go. Swap area will automatically give it the right um, partition and the right formatting. There you go. 
three nice partitions, three and a half gig for the root partition with all of your apps, four gigs for the home, and a gig for the swap partition. Bootloader, leave that where it is, because you can alternatively select to uh, put your bootloader on a floppy drive, but nobody does that anymore, so just click Next. Uh, it's connected to the internet, so it already knows my time zone, because based on my IP it has guessed my location, which is a nice step forward. Click on next here on forward. And then you can choose your keyboard. Because I'm doing this on a Mac with a French keyboard in a virtual machine, I am going to go for the French France keyboard and for the Macintosh layout, but it, you can choose whatever keyboard that you want to choose. Choose forward. And then you can enter your name, Nightwise. It will select a username for you, and then go for a nicely complicated password. And it will actually tell you if the password's OK. You can choose to log in automatically, but for security reasons, I always require my password to be logged on. And you can also choose to encrypt your home folder. And that means that even if somebody boots your CD with a live CD, they cannot access your data because you've encrypted it. But it does make it a little bit hard to recover that data if your system crashes. So be careful with that. Again, forward. And that is the final screen for the setup. So next up, it's going to install everything, get all of the data off of the um, CD or USB stick that you've installed as an installation media, or pick everything from the hard drive. Time to get some coffee. Okay, I hope you had a great cappuccino. Ubuntu takes about 20 to 30 minutes to install, depending on the speed of your PC. It takes about an hour if you pull it off the internet, depending on your internet connection. But once you're done, you are done. All you need to do is remove the installation media and restart the computer like this. Just click Restart Now. So the system has rebooted. Let's log in, enter our password, and take a look at the new desktop. Now this is only a point release. Don't expect any major changes to the UI. Uh, if you, we go from a Ubuntu uh, 4 to a Ubuntu 10 version in the same numeric release, 10.10 .10 is a numeric release of 10.4. There aren't going to be any major changes, so everything kind of looks the same, but it does look a little crisper these days. You've got your uh, Title bar at the top, of course, and uh, with all the menus that you've come to know and love. Preferences, administration, to configure your system, everything that you want. And the first thing that you are going to do is click on Administration Update Manager, especially when you're working with beta versions or release candidates, make sure that you are uh, installing your updates right away. It's given me an error here that it can't do anything, uh, it can't do everything uh, because it uh, has already uh, did a partial upgrade off the internet. We're going to ignore that uh, warning and just click on install updates and we are going to enter our password. Now this baby is going to pull down a lot of updates because we are still at the release candidate stage and uh, there are still things that change, uh, errors that get fixed before release. So it's going to take a while. 300 megabytes is what we're going to pull down off the net. So in the meantime, we're going to install the application that's going to make this uh, Ubuntu install uh, nifty and spiffy and cool. So we are going to go online and download the Ubuntu Tweak application. Easiest way is just to go to Google, enter Ubuntu Tweak, and the website for the Ubuntu Tweak app will be at the very first link. Ubuntu Tweak app will actually help you uh, make your Ubuntu exactly like it should be with all of the goodies and the extras right out of the box. 
So we're going to scroll down and download the application. 